Applications of differentiation. In this video, we are going to focus on second derivatives and stationary points. You will find this on page 287 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook y equals mx plus c to success. Second derivatives and stationary points. Now we will look at how second derivatives can be used to determine the nature of stationary points. Remember, I mentioned it in a previous video. So, at the maximum point, dy by dx starts at a positive value on the left side, decreases to zero at the, at the maximum point, and then decreases to a negative value on the right. Okay, so, so it's actually meaning this, and I'll, I'll connect it now to a previous graph. So, it's if this is the original function, this is the derivative function, the differentiated function. So it's actually a decreasing that's taking place there. So since dy by dx decreases as x increases, so as x increases, the rate of change of dy is negative because it's going down. The rate of change of dy by dx is written as this is the second derivative. Okay, so the second derivatives, a maximum point, then it will give me, if I substitute in the second derivative, it will give me a negative value. Okay, let's first do this and then I connect it. At the minimum point, dy by dx starts at a negative value, increases to zero at the minimum point, and then increases to a positive value. So it's basically doing this. It's an increasing function. So remember, this is the differentiated function. So the rate of change of d is written as this. This is the second derivative. Now, because it's going up, it's increasing. So if I use the second derivative for a minimum point, I will get a positive value because it's an increasing function. I just want to connect this to the previous, or, or let me just combine the sketch, and then you will understand. Okay, I'm just going to combine, and then I will connect it. Okay, so say for example, the graph is going to the original graph was going like this. I just get a pen. Okay, say so the original graph was going like this. Okay made it a little bit big because I want to use now okay and, and now I'm going to do this again okay so this is my original function this is fx okay now this was a maximum point and this was a minimum point. Now, if I take and I combine this two now, now this is going to be my derivative function. So, if I'm going to, it's going to give me something like this. Do you see? And then, so it's there, it's coming down, come down, and then it's going to do, sorry, I just want to, then it's going to do this. Okay, so if I combine, so there, it's for this maximum, so it's decreasing, can you see? And then, for this one, it's increasing for the minimum, and this is my derivative function. Okay, and then, so if you see from this maximum point, this was the negative part, which is from there, okay, let me make a sketch there there the negative part was underneath the x-axis i just want to take you back so that you recall so remember the maximum is a decreasing the minimum is indicating the increasing part and if i take you back to a previous sketch just to connect because mathematics is about making connections then you understand the thing so much better Okay, this is my sketch. So the original function, do you see? It's a maximum point, minimum point. And this is what I'm indicating there. There, it's indicating the maximum point, and then it's indicating the minimum point. So this was, this was my original function. 
this is my derivative function. And this is actually what I was showing you on this sketch. I didn't show it in the textbook, but on the videos I like to show you a little bit more. Okay. Just find the place again. Okay, so this is just indicating this. So don't, don't forget a maximum point is going to give you a negative value and a minimum point is going to give you a maximum value. Okay, let's look at the next example. Find the coordinates of the stationary points on the curve this and determine the nature of these points. Sketch the graph this. Okay, it's exactly the same. It's just this middle part that we're going to do different. So we're first going to differentiate. Then for the stationary points, we know that the derivative function will be equal to zero or the gradient will be zero on that point. So then we're going to factorize. We get the x values. We substitute the x values into the original equation to get my y values. Then this two in the original to get my y. There's my stationary points. And now this is the difference. Okay, it's just this. And this is usually the one that students and even teachers prefer to use. So they make use of the second derivative. That means they will go again and they will take this differentiated function and they will differentiate again. And then they will take the x values, the x values, and substitute it in the second derivative function. And then they will just look at the sign. If it's positive, it's indicating it's a minimum point. And if they substitute and they get a negative, it's indicating it's a maximum point. Okay, it's just faster than the previous method. And then the sketch, I'm just going to mark the points. And you can find the y-axis, as we said, the x-axis, we will show you in chapter 8. And then you just draw your curve. Because it's negative, it's first coming down. If it was positive, it will first go up. Okay, you can stop the video and you can do number 2. Just want to move it up a little bit. Again, you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Okay, let's start with number two. First, write down the function. Okay. Here square minus 11x plus 30. Okay, first step, differentiate. So dy by dx will equal to be 3x squared minus 8x minus 11. Okay, and then we say 4 the statue points dy by dx will be equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to just rewrite that. And in this place, we're going to put a zero. Okay, and then we're going to factorize. Um, it's 11, 11, 1. Uh, 3 and 1 because it's subtraction so 11 minus 3 is 8 and the biggest over cross gets a negative positive so it's going to be 3x minus 11 and x plus 1 equals 0 so it's 3x minus 11 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. So x is equal to 11 over 3 or x is equal to negative 1. Okay, now I must find my y values. So when x is 11 over 3, I substitute it in my original equation Okay, 
And if I substitute this, uh, you can use your calculator. You can just press it on your calculator and you will get negative 14 and 22 over 27. So therefore, what is my point? My point is going to be 11 over 3. I'm going to prefer now to write it rather also as a mix. So make it 3 and 2 thirds and negative 14 and 22 over. I think it's just easier to, if you do a sketch, to work with mixed null fractions. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the next one. When x is negative 1, I'm just going to substitute And if I just press that again on my calculator, very easy, I'm going to get 36. So therefore, what is my point? My point will be negative 1 and 36. Oh, I want to make it red. Okay, now we come to the important part. Okay, so to determine the this, this stationary points, we can say to... You don't have to write it, um, you can just do it. The nature of the stationary points We are going to make use of the double. We're going to differentiate again. Remember, this one is taking the square, and then this one is taking the square. Okay, so go there and differentiate again, and I get 6x minus 8. Let's just move this. Okay, and now I'm just going to say when... I'm going to move up a little bit. Okay, so when x is 11 over 3, d squared y over dx squared is equal to 6, and now substitute that 11 over 3. And then just continue, what is minus 8? And that is going to give me, on the dot, 14. Okay, let's not write it here. Then I must not have that, sorry. Why it looks like subtraction. Okay, now I'm just going to say it's bigger than 0, so then it's definitely or just positive. So, therefore... Therefore, uh, let, what was that point? 3 and 2 thirds, negative 14, 22 over 27 is a what? It's positive, so it's almost like the opposite, so it's a minimum point. And then I'm moving up again, and I say when x is negative 1, so then d squared y over dx squared equals 6, negative 1, minus 8, and that will give me negative 14. So if this is smaller than 0, so it's negative, so therefore, write your point, what was that point? Oh, there it was, negative 1, 36, is a maximum point. Okay, and now I'm just going to do that sketch and move up again. Okay. Um, so if I'm, I'm just going to put it on a grid, you can use a ruler, please, that it's a little bit more accurate. 
So I'm just going, oh, it's going to use my ruler. It's my ruler. Okay. And this is going to be zero, and this is the x axis. Okay, and I hope it's, this is going to be the y axis. And let me just see what is the points. Um, okay, so the two points is quite challenging. So I think I'm going to just work this. Yes. I think this will work. 10, 20, 30. And this was what I was thinking maybe I can be a bit on the gray. I think we will go to 40. And this is negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. And I think this one is all right. 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And then I just mark my points. And um, it's, okay, which one will I, yeah, this one, the negative 1, negative 1 and 36. So I think let's just see if it's red. Uh, negative 136, same there. Okay. And it's cutting the y axis at 30. If you want, you can mark that one. And then the other point is 3 and 2 thirds and negative 14. Negative 14, say, for example, there. Now remember, because it's positive, it starts like this. Okay. And this is just what I indicated there. So it's just going up. It's cutting there. And as soon as we, in the next uh, chapter 8, we will learn where it cuts the x-axis. But that's still to come. And there is my sketch using second derivatives to find the nature of the stationary points.